Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jimmy Newfeld, and I God has put a message on my heart today to, to tell you guys and to make a video about it. But before I get into that, I just want to make something very clear that I'm not claiming to be a teacher of any sort or claiming to be a prophet, claiming to be a pastor. I'm not. I'm I'm a 16 year old guy that's still in high school that is learning how to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and that is that is wanting to follow the Lord and that is wanting to give my life up for him. And I am claiming to be what I am claiming to be is a is a born again believer who has been delivered of of addictions and of justifying my own sin. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. Hoping that you guys will hear me and hear my heart as as I want the best for everyone. Want the best even for those who do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and this message may not be for everyone. Um, not everyone is going to hear the Word of God. Not everyone wants to. But this is for those who want to hear and who, who are willing to let go of their sin. And specifically being um, lying, lying to others, deceiving them, and, and committing sexual sin. And there is there are a lot of ways to overcome those. But first of all, in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. This verse would imply that we as Christians, we have power over over demons, and we're able to cast them out in Jesus' name. Jesus gave us the authority to do that. So if he gave us the authority to cast out demons in Jesus' name, would he not also give us the authority over sin in general? Are we not able to resist? I think, I think we are. According to what the Bible says here, we're able to resist sin and we have, we have the power because of what Jesus did, which is dying on the cross. And it's the only way that anyone is ever able to resist sin because of his sacrifice. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and temp tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? In verse 26, he said unto him, this is Jesus speaking, What is written in the law? How readest thou? In verse 27, the lawyer answered him by saying, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So what does he really mean here? Why would we want to do bad things to people who we consider people who we love? Why would we want to lie to them? If not for our own gain, and for our own better, for our own feeling. And why would we want to sin against God? By lying to Him and by disobeying what He says in our word, by, by deliberately um, committing sexual sin, whether that would be pornography or sex before marriage, masturbating in general. I have gone through that and I know that I am free 100% now. Based on the way, based on the fruits that have come after repenting and based on the fact that I have no desire, absolutely no desire to go back to watching pornography and masturbation. I am not condemning anyone that is currently struggling with that. I'm, I'm simply saying that you have to overcome it, and that should be of an encouragement. If you truly want to be a Christian who serves God with all their heart, their mind, their soul, you're going to want to let go of these things. You should want to. Otherwise, you're just living for the devil still. In verse 28, he said unto them, unto him thou hast answered right this 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 do and thou shalt live if you do this you shall live because that is what god commands us to do in verse 29 but he willing to justify himself said unto jesus and who is my neighbor so what he's saying is he's basically implying that maybe he doesn't need to you know treat everyone the same only those who are his neighbor but he's asking who. 
So then Jesus goes on talking about a man who was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he came across some thieves, which robbed him of all of his clothes, and then they wounded him and left him for dead. And then a priest came by and simply passed him, not caring, not having a care in the world. And then a Levite also, who was walking on the same path, walked right by him and did not help him. But there was a certain Samaritan, as he was journeying, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion for the man. And, and he went over, covered his wounds, anointed them, poured, poured in oil and wine, and picked him up on his animal, and then he brought him to an inn. And, and he took care of him. He paid for his stay and told the host of the inn to take care of him. He also told him, whatever the host will spend, he will, he will spend more when he gets back to repay him. Verse 36, in verse 36, Jesus asked the lawyer, Which now of these thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Which one of them were like the neighbor that Jesus is talking about, like that 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 treated the old man, or sorry, that that treated the man who was wounded like a neighbor. And then the the lawyer responded by saying, and he said, "He that shewed mercy on him," talking about the Samaritan. And then 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 said Jesus unto him, "Go and do thou likewise." That is one way to overcome sin, to overcome lying to others, to overcome any sin in general. But I'm mainly focusing on lying and, and the sexual sin, sexual immorality. Why are we sinning against Him, sinning against God and sinning against other people if we, if we love God? Why are we doing it? The truth is we don't. We don't actually care enough about God. Maybe he's at the back of our minds. Maybe we feel a little bit of conviction and yet we still go on and disobey him. And another way is also to pray. In Luke 11, Luke chapter 11 verse 9, Jesus says, and I say unto you, ask and it shall, shall be opened unto you. In verse 10 he says, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, now God here is not saying that you, you, just, you can just ask for whatever you want and you can get it. You know, like a million dollars or like a... A fancy sports car to win the lottery. He's not saying that. He's saying as he's saying that whatever you pray for that aligns with the word of God, that aligns like spiritual strength, for example, and and that and praying that you will overcome sin. That's what he will answer unto you. I mean, even if you ask for those other things, those worldly things, those material things, he's going to answer you, but he's not going to give you what you want, unless unless he knows that he can trust you with that amount of money and, and that you're going to help others with that money. You should have a, a, a heart that is for God and, that, and you should pray for things that you know he will answer and that you know that he will help you with. He will help you with anything. He will answer all of your prayers. Just he might say no for a lot of them because it's not where your heart is. Your heart isn't, isn't aligned with, with his word. So he's not going to answer in the way that you want it. And don't let that discourage you. But, but rejoice that, that you have a Heavenly Father that answers you and that cares about you. And who will always answer the right things for you and that has the proper response. In verse 11, it says, If a son shall, shall ask bread of any, any of you, that is a father, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish? Will he, for, for a fish, give him a serpent? 
So what what is what is Jesus saying? Well, he's basically saying that if if you ask your father for something, he's going to give you what you need. He's not going to he's not going to give you something other than what you need. Like if you need food. To add on to that, Jesus says in, in verse 12, or or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And in verse 12, he explains this whole passage. If ye then, being evil, know how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. So he's asking, if we in our flesh, as humans, if we're naturally evil, and and we still get what we need from, from our earthly fathers, how much how much better? How much how much more is our Father in heaven gonna let us receive and and for what we need. So that's where you should rebuke those doubts that you can't overcome sin. Because if you're praying to be delivered and yet you still give in, there is no faith. Because you're actually you're still disobeying God. If you're asking to be free and yet you don't resist it, then there is no faith. I would argue. Make a pros and cons list. I guarantee you there will be more cons in 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 whatever sin you're struggling with and doing it. More cons than pros. And then you'll realize that how wicked and how disgusting how disgusting you are when you do it. How disgusting you feel. And you'll be convicted by the Holy Spirit to stop. And I pray that, that all of you will be free from the things that I've gone through. Pornography, um, masturbation, just looking at disgusting images online. I pray that all of you will be free from that. From verse 17 through 26, Jesus brings up his authority by casting out demons and the chief priests accuse him of casting out demons in Satan's name. Yet, yet Jesus knew this, and he told them that every kingdom is, that is divided against himself will fall. So how are you going to overcome sin, trying to live for God, when instead you are willingly sinning against him? The only way you are going to overcome any sin is by resisting every temptation while praying and doing the right thing all the time for God at all times. You must rid yourself of your desires and, and pray for yours to align with God's. This is very clearly explained by Jesus Christ himself in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He tells his disciples um, these exact words. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And then in verse 24, he goes on even further and tells his, his disciples this. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. I'm going to have to read the next couple of verses from... Um, Luke 9, 25 through 27. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be cast away? Just ask yourself that. What have you ad advantaged by going against God, by, by following the, the desires of this, of this world, of the nature of just following the sin nature that you have, what have you gained? You've, you've gained nothing but guilt, and, and you've destroyed your relationship with God. And then in verse 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Hold on. For the Son of Man shall be, shall be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory. But I tell you a truth, that there be some standing there, which shall not taste of death till they see it, the kingdom of God. Why are you engaging with deathly things 
that you know are deadly according to the word of God. You have to you have to overcome it. Now, like I said earlier, I am not being self-righteous on here, on this platform, on my channel. Um, God simply just put this in my heart that I should preach about it. Um, read the Word of God for yourself. This is something everybody needs to come to terms with if they truly want to walk with God. If you truly want to walk with God and be born again, you have to overcome every willful sin according to your flesh. The only reason we are even able to overcome sin and have power over it in Jesus' name is because of his sacrificial death on the cross. Christ commands us to go and sin no more after delivering us and after we've received the truth. Let's not be the dogs who return to their vomit. If we say we are truly born again, according to the Bible, we cannot be physically disobeying God. Um, please read Romans 8 and 12 if you are encouraged by this message. And these chapters will explain exactly what I'm talking about with the, the idea of willful sin and unwillful sin. Uh, please read the Bible in general uh, with an open heart, with an open mind, if you want to have a genuine re relationship with the Most High God and get to know who He truly is. Um, I mean, this would go for any server, sorry, this would go for any sin in general that anyone ever commits. Um, that, like when you're trying to justify yourself, what, like when you're, when you're lying to other people, you, you are deceiving others and you are hurting others. Even if you, you think you're not, you are hurting others and you're, and you're grieving God's heart whenever, whenever you jerk off, whenever you lie, if you even murder someone, just any sin in general, that you know is willful. Like if you accidentally lie about something, that, that you didn't know was a lie, then, then that's different. There's a lot more grace for that. But if you deliberately do it and you're, and you're thinking that, you know, it's okay because Jesus died on the cross for me, I'll just ask for forgiveness later, that is wrong. And you, are, you are also sinning again while doing the sin by justifying yourself because you're, you're actively making yourself your own, own God. You're obeying what the devil is telling you. You're obeying him. That's, that's why this people have to be very careful with what they preach because it might sound good and it might, it, it might sound good to a lot of people and it, and it might make them comfortable with sin. I know that from example. I know that because it's happened to me numerous times. But, but after I actually re read the Word of God compared to these sermons, the Word of God is a lot more, the actual Bible is a lot more strict on what you should and shouldn't do. Than, than a lot of these pastors are preaching about, especially, sorry, especially in mega churches or in in churches that are you know like Pentecostal churches that focus a lot on um, their their music and and their like technology. There, I feel very little um, actual spirit. I feel I feel very little fruits. And I don't feel like they're genuine because of the way they're going against God. Anyone who is willing to hear, anyone who is willing to, to listen to this message and take it to heart will listen. But those who are not, you don't have to. You don't have to listen. You don't have to listen to what I have to say. But please be warned that God will judge you when you come face to face with Him. And do not, do not make the excuse that you never knew, because even if I didn't tell you this, you knew. But this has just been more clearly laid out to you. Once again, I'm not a teacher. You can read the Word of God yourself and find out if what I'm saying is true. But that's up to you, you know. I do hope that anyone who watches this video finds God and truly repents and turns from their sins. Because I know it's made my life better, and the way that I've treated other people has cha treated people has changed and I will never go back to jerking off never going I will never go back to doing pornography because it's what I've been delivered from because I'm washed by the blood of Jesus I'm never going back and I'm gonna keep repeating it to hold myself accountable I'm gonna keep repeating it 
I don't care if people think I'm weird for it. I'm going to keep repeating it. Because I know, I know I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. But you can, you can be washed by the blood of the, but blood of the Lamb too. Please do not be ashamed of His Word. Jesus loves you a lot. Please do not take this message wrongly. Please do not take this as me being self-righteous. I genuinely love everyone. Everyone on this earth that God has created. Everyone. Even those that are deep in their sin that follow the devil he um, heavily and on purpose. I love everyone because I've been filled with the Holy Spirit and I know what's right and wrong according to His Word, according to the Bible. I love you guys. And I want to see all of you in heaven. All of you who will listen. All of you who will hear this message. Whether you believe in God or not. Have a good day.